This place is just absolutely crazy. There's so many mulberry bushes, there's so many birds. We can actually kind of see them as they're coming down. Like you get that fallout effect of the rain coming in and the bird pushing the birds down. Hey everybody, Derek here from Badgerland Birding. Today I'm headed to Grand Isle, Louisiana to look for a really cool bird that was spotted yesterday. Not sure if it's still around, but it would be a really great pickup and actually a lifer for me if I saw it. The bird I'm looking for is a red-necked phalarope, which is a rare migrant in Louisiana. I made the trip down to Grand Isle, Louisiana's only inhabited barrier island, to see if it was still there. Grand Isle is known for being a great vacation destination and actually hosts a yearly bird festival. However, last year it was severely damaged by Hurricane Ida and is still in recovery. Eventually, I pulled up to the ponds where the phalarope was last seen. I'm gonna have to scan and see. The ponds were teeming with life, and I got great views of semi palmated plovers, roseate spoonbills, a black crowned night heron. American avocets, black neck stilts, and more, but no phalarope. Well, unfortunately, at first glance, I don't see the phalarope in here, but there's a lot of other cool stuff. This is really dry, and it basically just looks like a ton of little specks moving around out there, but they're actually all birds. This other pond has more water in it, and it's got a ton of spoonbills, which are gorgeous avocets. Um, cool stuff, just not the phalarope that I was hoping was here. I continued scanning the birds and enjoying the close-up views until I made a breakthrough. Oh, oh, phalarope! There it is! That's so cool! I seriously didn't see him until he popped up on the screen. Wow, look at that! Although there was a phalarope present, it turned out to be a Wilson's phalarope, and not the red-necked phalarope. The Wilson's phalarope is a vibrant migrant in Louisiana. They are known for spinning around in the water to corral the invertebrates that they feed on. Female Wilson's phalaropes in breeding plumage have a dark line down their neck with peach coloration and a striking white body. Female phalaropes will mate with multiple males, and males raise the young by themselves. Had the phalarope, but unfortunately, it was the Wilsons and not the redneck that was reported yesterday. So met some other birders here who are are really good birders. So they'll be around. I'll be around. So hopefully, we'll be able to find some other cool stuff here. Still cool to see a Wilsons, nonetheless. Just not a lifer like a redneck would be, but a, a really good bird here for the South still. I drove over to some other ponds and spotted an orchard oriole singing from the treetops. I met up with the other birders and we noted gall build turns, a bobolink, and two more Wilson's phalaropes in the distance. From here, I passed a field that provided a nice identification opportunity with three different species of egret feeding together. Something kind of cool is there's a field to the right that has three different egret species in it. So there's great egret, cattle egret, and snowy egret. After observing the egrets, I had great views of an osprey before stopping into the forest to look for migrants. Here I got incredible views of rose-breasted grosbeaks, nice. scarlet tanagers, Baltimore Orioles, and more. Female indigo bunting, gray catbird. Just made a quick stop at Lafitte Woods, and it seemed kind of dead at first, but there's actually a really nice little patch of birds, and kind of all the brightly colored ones you could want. There was scarlet tanager, summer tanager, uh, rose-breasted grosbeak, a couple um, red iberias in there as well, so even though it's a little feels a little late in the season, still really cool birds to see out here at Grand Isle. 
Later on, I met up with the other birders again and searched a different section of forest with plentiful mulberries, one of the migrants' favorite foods. With Grand Isle being one of the first stopover points as birds fly over the Gulf of Mexico, storms can cause them to drop down as soon as they hit land, which was what was happening today. This is called fallout, as birds literally can be seen dropping down from the sky. In this section of forest were yellow warblers, black pole warblers, magnolia warblers, bay-breasted warblers, red-eyed vireos, yellow-billed cuckoos, and more. This place is absolutely crazy. There's so many mulberry bushes, there's so many birds. We can actually kind of see them as they're coming down. Like you get that fallout effect of the rain coming in and the bird pushing the birds down. And then kind of when it lifts, seeing them go, oh, there's the Cape May. The Cape May warbler is a unique migrant through Louisiana. Males have an orange cheek patch, a black striped stomach with a yellow body and a gray cap. Females have similar, more dull coloration with a less defined cheek patch. In the summer, these birds breed in the northern United States, and their breeding success is largely based on the success of spruce budworm populations in the north. Cape May warblers nest mostly in spruce trees and create a cup-shaped nest with about four to nine eggs per clutch. I did one more check for the redneck phalarope in the ponds and got great views of a short-billed dowager and a leaf sandpiper. The Lee Sandpiper is a petite bird with a slightly curved bill, yellow legs, and a brown mottled back in breeding plumage. They are about the same size as a sparrow and are the smallest shorebird in the world. Lee Sandpipers are known for searching for food in drier areas compared to other small sandpipers, feeding mostly on insects and other invertebrates. Without any luck on finding the redneck phalarope, I stopped at one more forested area, picking up a great crested flycatcher. Afterwards, I decided to call it a day. Heading out from Grand Isle, overall, even though the redneck phalarope was a no-show, it was still cool seeing the Wilson's phalarope, that's a pretty good Louisiana bird. Also, there was a decent amount of diversity of migrants today, which I was pretty happy about because I felt like I was getting out a little late. So it was, it's always nice to see those colorful, beautiful species. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. That was a power fluff.